Dear listeners, today we will be talking on the caste system in India. What is the caste system? All of us at different points of time in our life have come across caste without realizing that it is the caste system that we are dealing with. All of us have different surnames, all of us have a different occupation and all of us interact with one another differently. We often wonder that why is it that we have a different surname. The surname often indicates our caste. But many of us are not familiar with this anymore. And the reason why we are not familiar with this anymore today is because caste has undergone a transformation over a period of time. I am sure you must have also heard of the terms SC, STs and OBCs. These are also terms which actually originate from the caste system. And in the course of our discussion today, we will be talking on all of these. The caste system in India is actually a system of social stratification which has a pre-modern origin. And the way that we know the caste system today was actually because of the Britishers. The Britishers in 1901 for the first time conducted a census in the Indian population and that census was a caste based census. And broadly if we were to talk of the caste system, the caste system is a process by which we place people in different occupational groups. The caste system is something which has pervaded several aspects of the Indian society and it has existed for centuries. And often the argument given is that it is rooted in religion and it is based on a division of labor. What are the characteristics of a caste system? The caste system consists of segmentation of society into groups, hierarchy, restrictions on food, drinking and smoking, endogamy and the concept of purity and pollution. What is meant by the segmentation of society? When we talk of the segmentation of society, please think of an earthworm which has segments. That means just as the earthworm is divided into different parts, similarly we too in society have different caste groups. We have different systems of social stratification. We have various varnas, we have various jatis and each of the varnas, each of the castes and each of the jatis has their own lifestyles. In the caste system, ascription is the major criteria. That means your caste is determined by birth and you cannot change it throughout your life. Plus the caste to which you belong is something which you inherit. That means it is given to you by birth. Hierarchy. The term hierarchy has to do with the ranking of castes according to the concept of purity and pollution. A hierarchical system is one where the Brahmins occupy the highest position. But this hierarchy was disputed in some cases and in various linguistic areas hundreds of castes had a gradation generally acknowledged by everybody. Below the Brahmins you had the Kshatriyas, then you had the Vaishyas and then finally you had the Shudras. The second characteristics of caste that we can talk about is, uh, has to do with restrictions on food, drinking and smoking or in short we can also call this commensal relationships. Different caste groups could not interact with one another randomly. There were strict rules which each of the caste groups had to follow in terms of food and drink. And generally what happened was it was only the pakka food which was accepted by the higher castes from the lower castes and not the kacha food. Now pakka food was something, it doesn't mean the raw and the cooked, but pakka food was something which was cooked in ghee and kacha food was something which was cooked in water. So foodstuffs like khichdi or dal which was cooked in water was something which you could not offer to the higher castes, whereas foodstuffs which had been fried in ghee was considered to be pure. Endogamy. Endogamy has to do with marriage practices and the term endogamy uh, means that a person can only marry somebody within the same caste group. So that means there were very strict rules governing inter-caste marriages as well and people could only marry within the same caste but different sub-castes. That means as far as marriage relationships were concerned people from different regions belonging to the same caste but different subcastes could marry one another. I am sure you have often heard of honor killings. When you talk of honor killings, honor killings typically take place when people tend to 
break the intercaste uh, marriage rule that is when people do not practice endogamy but they practice exogamy exo the term exogamy means marrying outside your caste group the concept of purity and pollution that is something which we have already discussed in terms of food but the concept of purity and pollution is also in terms of occupation it is also in terms of the way that you interact with one another. So, some occupations were considered to be pure like those followed by the Brahmins, the Vaishyas and the Kshatriyas and some occupations which were followed by the Harijans or the Shudras as we called them earlier, they were considered to be impure occupations. Impure occupations were occupations like scavenging, they included occupations of leather workers that is the Chamars, it also included all unclean tasks occupations. Now, if one was to look at occupations within the caste system, occupations were generally inherited and you could not choose which occupation you wanted to follow. So, that means if your father belonged to the Brahman caste and he was a priest, then you too had to be a Brahman, you too had to follow the profession of your father. If your father was a Kshatriya, that means if he was a warrior, you too had to be a warrior. If your father was a merchant, that is a Vaishya, then you too had to be a Vaishya and if you were a Shudra and you were engaged in agricultural labor or you were engaged in let us say working with leather then that is what you were supposed to do. Uh, these were very strict rules of castes which were applicable earlier but as we go as we proceed down as we proceed further we will realize that these things have undergone change and uh, whatever I am discussing with you right now dear listeners please do understand that this is a very typical book view of the caste system and it is not necessary that we do find it in our day to day interactions. Now, in terms of social and religious disabilities and privileges, lower castes had to follow a lot of restrictions like for instance, they were not allowed to enter temples, they were not allowed to wear gold ornaments, they were not allowed to use umbrellas and in some places and by the way the caste system is not something which is restricted merely to India, you also find it in other South Asian countries like Pakistan. Uh, Sri Lanka, Nepal and the restrictions placed on the lower castes are again universally to be found in all of these South Asian countries. For example, in Sri Lanka it was an accepted practice that the lower castes that is the unclean castes had to carry a branch and so, uh, the purpose of the branch was that they were supposed to wipe off their footsteps because even their footsteps were considered to be unclean. So, if they were dragging a branch behind them, that means they were automatically wiping off their footsteps so that a pure caste, a Brahman would not accidentally step on their footsteps. In other places, there were funny practices like the scheduled castes or the lower castes either ringing a bell or blowing a whistle, telling everybody that they were on their way because they were considered to be completely defiling to the extent that even their shadows were considered to be defiling. And of course, no such restrictions were placed on the Brahmins, no such restrictions were placed on the Kshatriyas and also on the Vaishyas. Now, in terms of speech, each of the caste group had its own customs, its own dress patterns and its own speech. So, that means you could easily make out which, uh, which uh, you, you could easily make out a person belonged to which caste group. So, for example, the way that you wore your sari, different caste groups wore the saris in a different way. The way, the way that you wore your dhoti, each of the caste groups will be wearing a dhoti in a different way. And like I had just mentioned a little bit earlier that the lower caste were not allowed to wear ornaments. So, that means again, if you were wearing ornaments, you did not belong to the lower caste, but you belong to the higher caste groups. Now, as far as uh, the discussion that we have had so far, this discussion has been broadly, be, we have broadly been talking about the four Varanas. Now, the term Varana actually also means color, uh, but of course, one cannot distinguish between different caste groups based on, based on color or Varana, because uh, if we were to just look at one another, all of us roughly have the same skin tone. So, literally the term Varana means color, but in practice, what one finds is that Varana is not really the operative term or it is not really the operative is in practice what we find is that the Varna is not really the operative term for caste instead it is jatis which which become the operative unit. Now, what is the difference between a jati and a Varna? Varna as I have just told you Varna has to do with color, it has to do with the four Varnas which I have already mentioned to you like the Brahmins, 
the Kshatriyas, the Vaishyas and the Shudras in that order in terms of their hierarchy. Now, Jatis are not four, but Jatis are innumerable. Roughly there are around 4000 or Jatis and the Jatis are also left referred to as the subcasts. And the Jatis have to do with com complex social groups that are not universally applicable because Jatis again tend to vary from region to region. The sociologist Andre Bete notes that the Varna played a major role in caste in classical Hindu literature, but it is Jati which is the operative unit. The term Varna represents a closed collection of social orders, whereas Jati is entirely open ended. And you can go on adding new Jatis depending on which sect, which denomination, which linguistic minority or which nationality you belong to. The relationships between different caste groups is based on a Jajmani system. The term Jajmani actually has to do with a patron client relationship. I am sure you have heard the term patron and client in terms of market based relationships, in terms of service based relationships. Similarly, in the caste system what you had was that the relationship that people had with one another was a patron client relationship in which the different jatis, the different caste groups performed various services for one another. So say for example, if you belonged to one of the jatis that is one of the sub castes of the Brahman Varna, then you would be performing the function of either teaching or performing a religious ritual. In return for which if you belonged to the Vaishya caste or one of the sub castes or one of the jatis of the Vaishyas, then and if you were a merchant then in return for the services given to you by the Brahmins, you would be giving them let us say for example, so a certain amount of grain or maybe cloth or, or if you belonged to the Shudra caste then you could be performing <coughs> some kind of manual labor for the upper castes. Let us say for example, cleaning out the cow sheds or perhaps you know uh, sweeping the veranda or cleaning the utensils in, in the Jajman's household. Right? So, that means when you talk about the Jajmani relationship, you are talking about the relationship between the Jajman that is the patron and the Kameen that is the client. So, you have a you have a relationship of a patron and a client relationship and this was this relationship was something which was not just restricted to one generation, but it continued over a period of time. And if even if you many of you may be living in villages and what you will realize today is that in villages today also such kind of relationships do exist. The only difference that has now happened is that because money has now entered transactions often in addition to giving people goods and you know goods like let us say cloth or grain, you also give them a certain amount of money. So, if you belong to the lower caste, so typically what you would find is that a lower caste person in a higher caste person's household would perhaps be cleaning out the cow shed in return for which they would get perhaps a meal or two to eat, some amount of money, some amount of grain once a month maybe and certain special gifts on certain festive occasions. So, that means this meant that you had a society in which there was a relationship which had been continuing over generations. But this has this is now beginning to undergo a change. Why is it going undergoing a change? The reason why it is now beginning to undergo a change is because of also the introduction of the class system. Now, when you talk about the class system, class does not have to do with caste. Instead, the term class has to do with occupational choices. Also, uh, the term class also has to do with your economic choices. So, that means when you belong to a particular class, let us say for example, you could be a middle class person, but you could be belonging to the lower caste. So, that means what now happens is that your caste status to a certain extent gets diluted because of your class status. right? So, that means caste and class help us to have a certain kind of mobility in the caste system. Now, so that means what, what we are saying today is that there have been changes in the caste system. Now, why is it that classes have become the operative unit today?